I recognize this from the map Lined up with that stick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But I've never, I've never noticed that deep. So I think that's another type of a cup of ice. There's something different. Uh, they're certainly different to the average cup of ice. They are, according to Ronald Morris, the, the, the nearest to the water's edge that he's come across anywhere in Europe, too. They're mostly about the same one you've seen anywhere else. So they're deep holes, deep enough mm. there to put a stick in. It started as a cup hole, but then deepened. And then this is the latest of all these current workings here. Yeah. Mm. At the same end of the of, 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 at the other end of the same outcrop, which is very unusual. Very unusual of an outcrop with cup marks to be worked mm. in any way. Of course, the same. The Greeks, you know, the Greeks are actually Celtic people, are they? But they took one look at Scotland. But they just back there. In the lower stick of that. Yes, I see. Aha. Yes. Oh yes, in the white house. There's a white house near the quarry, so I think to the right of that enough, it's the most famous 50 feet you can see. The third horizon, really. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a near horizon and a faint yeah. one and a very faint one. Yeah. In the middle yeah. distance is the call between two uh, little hills. Yeah, that's right. And it's that's beyond right. the call in line with that, that more or less. Mm -hmm. yes. Slightly uh, to the left of it. More or less above the end of that quarry bit. The quarry that runs along the yes. shore. Just small it up from there. Where do you sight from? What do you line up here? here. Well, I think we can sight from 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 several places. Yeah. Right on it today. I, 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 I would like to make it clear from my point of view that because this is a calendrical sight. It's to get the day. It's to get the day of the of the, of the midsummer <coughs> on which to base the calendar, yes. you see what I mean, and uh, it's possible the calendar which was made here, or which anybody could make here, would be self-correcting, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of ancient calendars yes. which were. Uh, it, it would be self-correcting because if you were a day out this year, you'd be yeah. back on course covered in the next and so on, you see, it was made a very, very practical and beautiful calendar. <coughs> and don't forget, uh, you would know, that you were to win the first when the, the Roman and, or Christian calendar appeared in these parts. It was about 4,500 years ago. So the, the, it would be running, running the show as long as that. It would be absolute rule of thumb, really, I think, it would be actually very practical. Right. Although there are plenty of signs that there are certain amount of which work in with it, that you would expect in the previous two days. This other little site down here, you're not sure. What? You're not sure what the other little site is. Uh, which one? Well, over the cups. With the, over the cups? The cup marks. Oh, well, that way, we came up that way simply so you could see it, because it has, it has been suggested with the possibility that it it might have some astronomical significance, you see. But we only thought of that today. So. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, it doesn't really matter. Just to, to point out that this is a, this boulder, and uh, geologists have argued as to whether it's been moved into this position or whether it originally, well, it originally formed part of the rock that Ewan is standing on at the moment, and it was tilted forward on its face, and was upended and and shifted with levers, possibly across slightly. It is resting directly onto the raised beach. This uh, this rock, and as you see, a large bit of it has split or been split off the back, forming a sort of stall behind. Mm -hmm. 
in which uh, um, a, a floor of pebbles has been raised well above the raised beach level and from which you can stand and look main part of the site point. First of all, here behind you, we've just come in, you'll see a cobbled way leading down off the edge of this, mm -hmm. this terrace here. Now the, the central axis of the, that is, is points directly towards where the sun disappears at midwinter over that near ridge, quite close, mm -hmm. quite close. But until these trees grew up, you could see it. Uh, and it goes down in, 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 a, in a big bo uh, ball, uh, just at the foot of a big tree on that ridge, which is just hidden by these damn trees here. So you had, towards the, towards the midwinter, you had this cobbled way leading off this area, where presumably the general public were not admitted anyway, and probably only those mm. concerned with the business came in here. Uh, and about 10 feet down, it is blocked, blocked by a series of larger boulders. Yeah, yeah, right. And you'll see where he's standing inside. Uh, there are two stones laid lengthways and one across the front forming a hollow square mm -hmm. where he's standing. And the axis of that is due west towards... The, just at this point here, there is a very convincing dry stone wall, quite massive. Yes. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised that originally this lower terrace was surrounded by yes. a very substantial wall you know, to mark it off as a sacred area, but only this little fragment yes. remains. And the other thing I should also explain is that none of, the, none of these stones were originally found standing. They were lying under the terrace and the sockets were found by excavation and mm -hmm. prove to contain them rather neatly. Mm -hmm. That, if you just run your hand down the far side of that stone, you'll find there's a, a, a man-made, something like a small cup mark, about halfway down in the middle on the mm -hmm. far side. It's a beautiful stone. I don't know where it came from. Beautiful. I also... Observation from low ground mm. down there. Mm -hmm. and if you take a line from mm -hmm. that tree you see right there, over the tip of the pyramid stone, mm -hmm. it shows you it, it, it points directly towards where the sun rises on the high skyline. Rises <coughs> rising. Rises there and sets there, just a little short arc of that. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. It only rises in these latitudes and goes from out to the moon. Well, it just, yeah, just yeah. comes over the top. It's yeah. enough to show a throw a shadow mm -hmm. here. But it soon became obvious that there were no fortifications on this yeah. And um, it was a grassy top, and the fishermen used to spread their nets out. Uh, no sign of any being at all on fortification. I'm just thinking of the dark being uncovered. Yes. You know, yes. Started to think of other I just wondered why it was uncovered. <laughs> 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 oh, it certainly wasn't anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just my propensity for when I see two stones side by side, I always investigate. <laughs> <laughs> You're standing in a fire trench. This is a fire, nine foot long fire trench here, which starts to there and goes right down into there. This is one side of, this forms one side of the fire trench, 